Okay, so we have the two scopes side by side. This is a 2445A, and it's 150 megahertz. That is a CIE 3310, 10 megahertz. Um, and really interesting thing, I'm gonna just do a power up test because it's actually, it's actually fun watching these two race to power up. So these actually have been on for um, maybe five minutes before this happened. Um, and you see the flip both switch at the same time. And that blinks and does a bunch of stuff. And we're gonna get a trace here, so that wins. Well, this is still blinking, and then we have a trace there. So this is gonna be the beginnings of my comparison of my two scopes. Okay, so I'm gonna start on the back. This whole unit looks pretty good for having been shipped across the US. Um, we have four BNC jacks in the back, and we have a channel 2 signal out. It's a representation of what you put in the channel 2. Two gate outputs, A and B, and we have our external Z-axis um, input. And also, um, we have a free dead spider hanging out there. <laughs> I'll clean that on the sec. And on the back of the CIE, we have a very nice back cover. It's kind of shiny. We have an external input trace rotation control where you're loosening the screws and actually adjust intensity and focus okay so quickly about the basics um four channels one channel obviously this was the winner but channel three and four are not full channels they only have 0.5 and 0.1 volt per divisions um it's not too big of an issue uh but it's a consideration um, also, we have a whole ton of extra triggering options on this one. You know, we can trigger on each channel, and we've got a couple of modes, so AC, noise, reject, HF, reject, whatever. Bunch of stuff, different things going on, mode source coupling. Uh, we also have a, like a mode B, or B sweep thing going on here, where you can view like a s small portion of the wave, and you can have that magnified off, uh, like that. And next we have a ton of extra measuring options. So you can have delta T's and you can play with that. You have a delta V, you can play with that. And you also have a, well, press both at the same time. You also have a frequency measurement. There we go. Um, this obviously has none of that fancy stuff. And to turn it off, just press a bunch of buttons twice. Um, also, uh, these knobs are not the very best. I kind of like those knobs better. Um, the first one, if you switch this time-based knob really quickly, so right now we're in 100 seconds, 100 nanoseconds, goes on to 50, and then 20, okay? But if I switch that really quickly, you know, <laughs> and turn, it, it goes like a little bit. So I'm clicking this knob like a bunch of times and it only goes one or two settings. Whereas here, we can switch as fast as we can, as fast as we want, and it'll go right into the mode we were looking for. Um, no time wasted there. Um, next one is this position knob. You know, it, it moves kind of fast. I'm not really a fan of this. Uh, this one, it's solid. Like it doesn't, see it doesn't like run away from you when you need to move it somewhere. Um, there are also weird issues with, well not issue, but I just don't like it, but these, you hear that? Whenever I change modes, it clicks, it just, okay, I mean fine, I guess, right? Um, it clicks, this one obviously does not click, and it goes right into the mode you're looking after. And this actually clicks if you change the volts, uh, past certain positions, so... And 50 millivolts, you have a click. And then at what mole, you have a click right there. And trigger is also kind of weird. Yeah. And that one obviously has no clicky relays whatsoever. Not that fancy. Um, also, next, we have triggering things. So right now, I'm just loosely plugging this BNC in. And if you watch... I'm going to plug this in, see how it takes a second for it to actually trigger, it kind of shows like a screen and then 
and then the wave. But um, over here, we can get this to trigger immediately. So once it plugs in, see that? Signal, no signal, signal, no signal. And this is no signal, eh, kind of signal, then signal. So, yeah, that one wins. Okay, here's another thing. The XY mode on this scope is actually really easy to use. You have an XY setting up there, and you have two, you have exactly two BNCs on this entire machine. So you know exactly where to put these probes. Um, and you can see it's working. I have two signal sources. One is my uh, DDS generator, and one's my phone. Uh, about two kilohertz signal. And this also has a TV mode. Um, which, by the way, this tech scope does not have. This is probably an older scope, which is why it's got a TV mode. Okay, just another odd thing to notice is, see this wave? I have it set up so that it's, I have one side right against the edge of the screen right there. And if I scroll, you see this uh, edge right there? If I scroll, that wave actually keeps going for another, like, division, division and a half before it stops, right? Whereas if we plug this into here, um, you can see that this this is right at the edge of the screen, okay, right there. And if I move it over, there there isn't even half a division. Like from there, there's like half a division of extra line until I run out. So that's that's just one of those weird things. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. But X ray mode on this thing, so it's weird. <coughs> took me a long time to figure this out, but you see an XY sticker down there and another X label over here. Where is the Y label? Just, where is it? Um, I checked the manual. It was absolutely no help because it mentioned the X channel is channel 1. Oh yeah, let's just plug it into there. And then, where's channel 2? Or channel Y? It just never said. Search manual. It doesn't say where Y is. But, um, it took me a while to figure it out, but eventually I found that any of these actually work. For the Y. And how do I get into there? Well, at first of all, you gotta turn channel 2 on, and you gotta figure out what happened to that. This uh, is, by the way, my phone signal. It's not that clean. This cleaner signal here is from the DDS, and yeah, well, that's what you get from your phone, I guess. Um, but then here, you turn all the way down, you keep going, keep going, there. You're in XY mode, and when I was first doing this, I was like, why are there two lines? Right, so I, that moves, and that moves both at an angle at the same time, so I was just a wee bit confused, as you may imagine. But um, it turns out that there is a vertical trigger thing over here that you're supposed to get into for this XY mode to work. And you can't just do it like this. You can't be like, oh, vert, right? You can't do that. You've got to turn channel 1 off. And then let channel 2 be the only channel that's on. And then you go, you keep hitting the up button until you get to vert. And it'll go to channel 2 at the same time. And now, um, channel 1 doesn't do anything anymore. Just weird. So you have to leave that off. And then you're only in channel 2. And then you see here's the XY um, ring circle thing going on. And the display isn't really that helpful either. It just says channel 1X. Well, where's channel 2 or channel Y, right? Um, if I move this over to channel 3, and I'm going to channel 3 and trigger that vert, you see that uh, the same thing happens. You get like a circle that is slowly spinning. But since the voltage doesn't go all the way down, and that's all you get. So those are the main uh, issues with XY that I've found in the scope. It's just not very intuitive. Um, I guess a couple other things, really, differences. You have an intensity display here. You can crank that up and down. Beam finder is kind of nice. Kind of like just shrinks the screen for you. Focus, you can get it to be blurry. Well, here, how about this? Let's go back to channel 1, turn that off, and there, okay, and um, well not that button, this one, focus, so you see I get, get that into the line, then it gets blurry, turn it back, and it gets sharp again, right, 
And then readout intensity, I can adjust the readout like that. And then here's a scale illumination. Ooh, only works if you have your hand over it. See how it gets red. And then if I turn the back down, that red disappears. So, yeah, that's about it.